A year after the Soviet Union tested the world's largest thermonuclear weapon known as the Tsar Bomb, the United States conducted their own thermonuclear test in the South Pacific, codenamed Starfish Prime. While its 1.4 megaton blast paled in comparison to the Tsar Bomb's 50 megatons, it was the largest high-altitude nuclear test ever attempted. The blast generated waves of charged particles traveling across Earth's magnetic field. The microwave energy set off burglar alarms, wiped out street lights, and tripped power line circuits in Honolulu, more than 800 miles away from the blast. The terrifying results unintentionally brought in a new era of weaponry. We're probably known as, I would say, the premier company in the nation to understand high power microwaves uh, effects on electronic systems. Non-kinetic weapons, which includes high power microwaves or HPMs, can wreak havoc on an enemy's weapon system, shutting down full operations within a millionth of a second and without hurting people. They're non-lethal because they don't affect the human body for the types of pulses that we put out. Radio frequencies are all around us. The AM and FM signal beaming to your car sits in the kilohertz and megahertz frequency range. Your home's Wi-Fi router typically will operate between two and five gigahertz. Your microwave oven is about a thousand watts. Today's microwave systems are over a billion watts, but they're emitted in a very short amount of time. J. Mark Del Grande is the chief technology officer of Verus Research in Albuquerque. High-powered microwave systems are a keystone of the work done in this facility, which could have a variety of applications in the future. Say an adversary wanted to put a radio and communications tower on top of a hospital. Well, I can use a high-power microwave system to take out the communications center without putting a bomb through the hospital. In the early days of HPM research, the power needed to generate such pulses required large, heavy equipment. Not ideal if that equipment was on an airplane. So the challenge for mechanical engineers like Lucas Ridgway has been to make an emitter powerful enough to do the job, but small enough to make it mobile. We have to figure out how we're going to either machine or 3D print these pieces, how we put them together. Um, we have to look into what type of RF they're producing and see if any of the materials that we're going to use to put them together are going to be interfering with that RF. And then not only that, we also have to look into procuring these materials. In 2012, Boeing announced the successful test of the Counter Electronics High Powered Microwave Advanced Missile Project, or CHAMP. The project was a collaboration between the Air Force Research Laboratory, the Directed Energy Directorate, and Kirtland Air Force Base. CHAMP was able to shut down seven different targets before self destructing, ensuring the technology wouldn't fall into enemy hands in a theater of combat. And as with the development of nuclear weapons, if the U.S. has the technology, it's only a matter of time before other nations have an HPM program as well. China is their investment in high-power microwave research, specifically on source system and technologies to make those things smaller, dwarf both the United States and Russia for that matter. While much of the current research is still under wraps, Del Grande says that the real-world applications of HPMs aren't limited to the military. Non-lethal deterrence could be used by law enforcement for crowd control and SWAT situations, enforcing the technology's ultimate goal, de-escalating dangerous scenarios while saving lives.